hello everyone welcome to our channel whales and tails in this video we are going to talk about from question number 23 to question number 28 so this is our financial risk and regulation question bank playlist so i suggest you to go to that playlist and you can watch all the question bank videos in this video it is from 23 to 28 plus there is one concept I would like to discuss before going to these questions in this concept I'm gonna help us in solving one of the question which is I think question number 27 so the question is what is cumulative probability this is very interesting question and let's solve this we can imagine that we have a friend so we have a friend who likes to borrow our toys and sometimes he give them back to us and sometimes he doesn't and we want to know how likely he is not he is not going to give back to us and this is probability of default so the probability of default can change depending on how our friend is feeling if he is feeling happy and has many toy of his own then he is more likely to give our toys back to us and if he is sad if he is sad then in that case the probability of default is super high this means that the probability of default goes up and down with our friend's mood and this can be a problem for us because we don't know when our friend will feel how our friend will feel in the future if we lend him our toys when he is happy we may think he will give them back to us but if he becomes sad later he might not he may not give them back to us this can make us lose our toys and also we will be also unhappy ultimately so we can try to avoid this problem by using a different way to estimate the probability of default and we can look at how often our friend gives our toys back to us over a long period of time and not just when he is happy or sad so this is called through the cycle probability of default and the probability of default is more stable and does not change with our friend's mood it helps us to decide whether to lend our toys to our friend or not so this is simply probability of default and now the question is what is cumulative probability of default or what is cumulative probability so let's imagine we have now we have two friends not just one friend we have two friends who likes to play with us and sometimes they come to our house and sometimes they don't and we want to know how likely is that both of them will come to our house on the same day and this is cumulative probability so we have two friends the cumulative probability depends on how often each of our friends comes to our house if if one of our friends come to our house very often and other one comes to our house very rarely the cumulative probability is low on the other hand if both our friends come to our house very often or very rarely together the cumulative probability is very high so if both of the friends come to our house sometimes the cumulative probability is medium the cumulative probability depends on so cp depends on whether our friends like to play with each other also if our friends like to play with each other then they are more likely to come to our house on the same day and if our friends don't like to play with each other they are less likely to come to our house on the same day so the cumulative probability how we are going to find it by multiplying by simply by multiplying by multiplying the chances of each of our friends coming to our house for example if the chance of our first friend coming to our house is 50 percent and the chance of second friend coming to our house is 50 percent then the cumulative probability is 50 into 50 which is 25 percent so 50 percent into 50 percent is equal to 25 percent this means that there are 25 percent chance of both of our friends will come to our house on the same day so it is as simple as that 
if we see from another perspective the same thing cp is a probability of the occurrence of two or more events and the events can be sequential such as tossing a coin twice such as or concurrent such as rolling two dice together the event must be independent which means that the outcome of one event does not affect the outcome of another event the cumulative probability can be calculated by multiplying the probabilities of each event for example if the probability of event a is 0.5 the probability of event v is 0.5 the cumulative probability of both a and b is 0.5 into 0.5 which is 0.25 this means that there is 25 percent chance that both a and b will happen the cumulative probability can also be affected by the correlation between the events so the correlation is a measure of how closely two events are related if two events have positive correlation it means that they tend to happen more together more often than by chance if two events have negative correlation it means that they tend to happen apart more often than by chance so if two events have a zero correlation it means they are not related at all so the correlation between the events can change the cumulative probability from the product of the individual probabilities for example if the probability of event a is point b point event b is point 0.5 but the correlation between a and b is point 0.5 so the cumulative probability of a and b is not point 0.25 it is point 0.375 this means that there is 37.5 percent chance that both a and b will happen so so the uh, the correlation also have a high role in this cumulative probability taking this whole cumulative probability with our example of two friends so we can also put this in in this way let me our two friends who likes to play soccer sometimes they come to the park sometimes they don't and you and uh, we want to know how likely is that both of them will come to the park on the same day and this is called community probability the community probability depend on how often each of our friends come to the park if one of the friends come to the park every of very often and other one comes to the park very rarely the community probability is low whereas if the both of the friends come to the park very often or very rarely the community probability is high and medium and then it goes to medium the community probability as we know depends on other factors also whether our friends like to play soccer with each other or not and if, if our friends like to play soccer with each other then they are more likely to come to the park on the same day and if our friends don't like to play soccer with each other then they are less likely to come to the park on the same day and we can find the community probability simply by multiplying the chances of each of our friends coming to the park for example if the chances of first friend is 0.5 percent 0.5 and the chance of other friend is 0.5 the community probability is 25 percent this means that there is 25 percent chance that both our friends will come to the park on the same day so this for till this we know but now there is a role of correlation so in this same in the same example the community probability is not the same as the product of individual chances this happens whenever friends are influenced by something else that makes them more or less likely to come to the park for example in our friends example maybe our friends are influenced by the weather if weather is sunny they are more likely to come to the park and if weather is rainy they are less likely to come to the park so weather is called the correlation between our friend correlation is a measure of how closely two things are related if two things have a positive correlation it means that they tend to happen together often than by chance so if and if two things have a negative correlation it means that they tend to happen apart more often than by chance so if two things have zero correlation it means they have not at all related the correlation between friends can change the cumulative probability from the product of the individual chances for example if the chance of first friend 50 other chance 50 and the correlation is 50 percent then the community probability is not 25 it is 37.5 percent and this is very interesting and how 37.5 percent is calculated very simple Correlation is major of how closely two events are related. If two events events have positive correlation, it means they tend to happen together or more often than by chance. If negative, then vice versa. The formula is with a given correlation is. So the question is probability of A and B is equals to probability of A into probability of B plus R into square root s 
r into square root of probability of a into 1 minus probability of a into probability of b into 1 minus probability of b probability of a and probability of b individual probability of the events r is a correlation coefficient minus 1 and 1 and uh, and we can get this answer very easily which is 0 0.5 0.5 into 0.5 plus r in our case is r is also 0.5 then we are multiplying this with the square root of probability of a event into probability of not having a event 0.5 1 minus 0 0.5 is 0 0.5 then probability of b event probability of not having b event is also 0.5 so it is also very simple then ta -da. And that's it so we will get 0.5 into 0.5 is 0.25 plus 0.125 which is 0.375 and answer is 37.5 percent and i just need one second to i want to find my calculator for some other calculation that i hope it is near ha 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 i hope it is not close to me yes it is so guys one second one second just one second i'm looking for my calculator to do some calculation uh, uh, uh. yes so i was right so i was right so and this that's it the this part of our formula the square root part of the formula tells us how much our friends are influenced by something else that makes them more or how much our friends are influenced by something else that makes them more or less likely to come to the park and this is called correlation the correlation is a number that can be between minus 1 and plus 1 if the correlation is close to plus 1 it means their friends are like friends like to play with each other a lot if correlation is close to minus 1 it means that our friends don't like to play with each other at all and if the correlation is close to 0 it means that our friends don't care about each other the correlation is multiplied by the square root of some other number the square root is a way of finding a smaller number that when multiplied by itself gives us the original number for example square root of 9 is 3 because 3 into 3 is 9 so, so the square root of 16 is 4 because 4 into 4 is 16 so the num other numbers are the chances of our friends coming to the park or not for example pa is chance of our friend coming to park 1 minus 1 minus pa chance of a friend not coming to the park same thing goes for pb chance of second friend coming to the park 1 minus pb means chance of second friend not coming to the park and the square root of these number tells us how much the chances of our friends coming to the park or not or not can change if the square root is big it means the chances can change a lot and if the square root is small it means that the chances can change a little so the correlation and the square root correlation and the square root of this thing are multiplied together to tell us how much chances of both our friends coming to the park can change because of correlation and if the correlation of the square root are big it means that the chances can change a lot and if the correlation and the square root are small it means chances can change a little that's it so this was our discussion on cumulative probability and why it is important because we have one question on this and this this i think i thought this is something interesting to cover before going to these questions let's go to this question one by one first thing first from a bank perspective which one of the so what i'm going to do i'm going to cover two questions and then i will explain those questions and meanwhile if something strikes your head you can also you can also answer this question with along with me first thing first 
from a bank perspective, which one of the following four options currently correctly describes the benefit of compensating balances? Okay, compensating balances. First of first option is compensating balances allow the bank to net some of the exposure it may have in case of default by taking funds from the specific from the specific deposit account once a borrower default. Second is Community balance can allow the bank to net some of the exposure that may in case of default by charging this account in case of default. Other is by taking funds from this specific deposit account once a borrower default. Third option is setting balances increase the expected loss rate and improve the capital structure by controlling asset type and avoiding and avoiding payment delays. Compensating balances provide stable funding to the bank and reduce its reliance on more volatile ex external wholesale funding sources. Compensating balances increase the net amount lent to the borrower and the amount earned on the loan and raise the bank's interest rate margin. So the correct answer is Compensating balances provide stable funding to the bank and reduce its reliance on more volatile external wholesale funding sources because Compensating balances is a minimum deposit that a borrower agrees to maintain with a lender in a bank account and the lender and the lender can use the compensating balances to invest in other loans and earn interest. The borrower may benefit from a lower interest rate on the loan but also pays interest on the full amount of the loan including the compensating balance. For a bank, compensating balance is a source of stable funding that reduces its funding cost and liquidity risk. So this is quite interesting thing. And why first option is wrong? Why this is wrong? Because compensating balance, they are saying compensating balance allow bank to net some of the exposure. This is wrong because compensating balances are not used as a collateral or recovery for defaulted loan. They are used as a source of funding and liquidity for the bank. This is wrong because for the same reason, compensating balances are not linked to the loan repayment or default. So they are separate account that the borrower agreed to maintain with the bank. Third is, Compensating balances do not affect the expected loss rate or the capital structure of the bank. So they do not change the risk or the leverage of the bank also. They, are, they also do not control the asset type, avoid payment delays as they are not related to the loan performance or quality. Next is why this is correct answer. We already know why it is correct answer because they are these balances are form of internal funding that the bank can use to invest in other loans and earn interest. They reduce the bank funding cost and liquidity risk as they are more stable and less expensive than external sources of funding. So this is quite interesting question. The next question is question number 23. No, question number 24, which is which of the following methods smooth out the pro-cyclic probability of default? with the trend, point in time, moving average and through the cycle. So the probability of default is the likelihood that the borrower will fail to repay its loan or meet its contractual obligation. And a PD can be estimated using different methods that reflect different perspectives on the credit risk of the borrower. A point in time is based on the current economic and financial condition on the borrower situation. PIT is more sensitive to the changes in the business cycle and tends to be higher in recession and lower in expansion and through the cycle is based on the long term average default rate of the borrower or a group of borrower with similar characteristics and uh, TTC is more stable less affected by cyclic fluctuation so a TTC PD smooth out the pro cyclic probability of default and reduces the volatility of capital requirements and credit rating so that's why the answer is TTC so this is another simple question because this is a method of estimating the probability of default that is based on 
long term average default rate of the borrower or group of borrower with similar characteristics so it means that it is more stable less affected by the cyclic fluctuation and which ultimately means that it smooth out the pro cyclic of the probability of default and reduces the volatility of capital requirement and credit rating so this this that's why the answer is ttc with the trend with the trend <laughs> with the trend is not even a method of estimating the probability of default it is a term that describes the tendency the tendency of some credit rating agency to adjust their rating in the same direction as the market condition which can amplify the pro cyclically cyclicality of the capital requirements and credit risk point in time is a method of estimating the probability of default that is based on the current economic and financial conditions and the borrower situation it is more sensitive to changes in the business cycle and tends to be higher in recessions and lower in expansion it does not smooth out the pro cyclicality or the probability of default but rather it reflects it because it's based on current economic and financial condition and financial condition and and the borrower situation also so it is more sensitive to the changes in the business cycle and tends to be higher in recession lower in expansion in case of moving average this is also not a method of estimating probability of default it's a statistical technique that calculates the average of series of data points over a specified period of time and it can be used to smooth out short term fluctuations and identify long term trends but it is not directly applicable applicable to the probability of default so that's why we selected ttc another very simple question next question is question number 25 which is bank t bank t has provided substantial financing to two mortgage lending companies very good each of the mortgage companies has exposure a default of 20 million okay for the loss given default 100% fine the probability of default is 10% so each company has pd of 10% the joint probability of default of companies 5% if they are they were given a um, if they were modeled as independent risk what would be the probability of cumulative Forty million loss from these two mortgage companies, and the answer is ten percent into ten percent, which is point zero one percent. This one. If the two mortgage companies were modeled as independent risk, the probability of cumulative USD forty million loss from their default would be equal to the product of their individual probability of default. which is probability of because each of the mortgage company has pd 10% if you multiply them together the answer will be 0.01% change chance that the both companies will default and cause a total loss of usd 40 million to the bank however this assumption of independence may not be realistic as the two companies may be exposed to some common risk factors that affect the that affect their default correlation also so the joint probability of the default of the company is 5% which is higher than the product of the individual which is 5% which is not higher it's way higher than the individual probability of default so this which ultimately means that it implies that the true companies are positive correlated and tend to default together more often if they are were independent so this is quite another interesting question and these are free questions we can answer if the questions are asked in exam these are totally free questions because these are very easy questions if the two mortgage companies were modeled as an independent risk the probability of cumulative 40 million loss from their default would be equal to the product of their individual probability of default so in this case that's why we multiply with 110% 10% both and the it's and the next thing is 0.1% is wrong because the probability of either company one or two defaulting not both so that is probability of each company default is equal to probability of other company default plus probability of other company default minus probability of both company default so it is probability of one company default probability of 
probability of one component default plus pro probability of other component default minus probability of both component default which is 0.01 percent and which is 0.19 and this means that there is 19 percent chance this is sorry 0 0.19 percent chance that either company will default and cause a loss of usd million 20 to the bank and this is very very easy peasy question and next go to the question number 26 how many questions are there just three more question bank n is currently creating a basal advanced measurement approach ama program of operational loss data and what information should the bank collect in its loss data report the answer should be first option is the actual loss amount over the threshold ignoring any recoveries so this is wrong obviously because the bank should collect the gross loss amount before any recoveries as well as the recoveries of gross loss amount over a reasonable period of time and this will allow the bank to estimate the net loss amount and the loss given default more accurately second is the date of the event and the net loss only again the date of the event and the net loss only is also wrong because bank should collect more information than just the date of the event and the net loss the bank should also collect the threshold for the data collection the business line and the event type of the loss the causes and the consequences of the loss and the risk mitigation action taken by the bank this will allow the bank to analyze the frequency severity and distribution of the losses as well as the risk driver and the risk control next is the date of the event the amount of the loss and threshold so this is better than the previous one and only the amount and amount of loss and recoveries again this is wrong because bank should collect more information than just the amount of loss and recoveries bank should collect the date of the event the threshold for the data collection the business line event type the causes and the consequences the risk mitigation action taken by the bank and because all these will allow bank to analyze the frequency severity distribution of the losses as well as the risk driver and the risk control so the only option which is left and which has more information is the fourth one bank should collect the date amount threshold because date of the event will help the bank to identify the timing and the trend of the loss amount will help the bank to measure the impact and severity of the loss and the threshold of the data collection will help bank to ensure the completeness and the quality of the data next is the ccar capital plan plan rule specifies four mandatory element of capital plan for bank holding companies which of the following is part of this rule so this is an assessment of the expected law uses and sources of cash over planning horizon the detailed description of the bhc process for assessing liquidity risk the bhc leverage ratio the discussion of any baseline changes to bhc business plan and the correct answer is first one the ccar capital rule requires the bank holding companies to assess the expected uses and sources of capital over the planning horizon which reflects their size complexity risk problem risk profile as a scope of operation assuming both expected and stressful condition and this ultimately allows bank holding companies to demonstrate their ability to maintain adequate capital levels under various scenarios and to support their ongoing operation and client activities detailed description of the bhc process no ccer capital plan rule does not require bank holding companies to provide detailed description of their process for assessing liquidity risk liquidity risk is the risk that a bank holding company will not be able to meet its financial obligation as they become due ccr capital rule focuses on the capital adequacy which is the ability of the bank holding company to absorb losses and continue as a going concern however bank holding companies are expected to consider the interplay between capital liquidity in their capital planning processes bhc leverage issue again this is wrong because ccar capital rule plan rule does not require bank holding companies to report their leverage ratio the leverage ratio is a measure of bank holding companies capital relative to its total asset what is leverage ratio leverage ratio is a measure of bank bhc bank holding companies capital related to its total assets the ccar capital plan requires bank holding company to report their risk 
risk-based capital ratio, which are measures of their risk capital relative to the risk-weighted assets. The risk-weighted assets are the assets that are adjusted for their riskiness according to the Basel standards. So according to the Basel standard, risk-weighted assets, weighted assets, assets are weighted assets are multiplied with the exposure and adjusted for the riskiness according to the basal standards so the risk based capital ratios are more comprehensive than the risk sensitive and risk sensitive than the simple leverage ratios last point is bhc business plan no this is also not correct ccr plan rule does not require bank holding companies to discuss the any baseline changes to their business plan baseline scenario is a scenario that reflects the consensus views of the economic and financial outlook BHC are required to discuss any expected changes to their business plan that are likely to have a material impact on their capital adequacy or liquidity under the baseline scenario and the stress scenarios. So the st and st what are stress scenarios? Stress scenarios are the hypothetical scenarios that involve adverse or severely adverse economic and financial condition. Last question is mark to mark process includes which one of the following activities? Extremation of the market value paying cash for the settled portion, obtaining verifying market prices held in the trading book, assessing the profitability of each trade. First thing estimated the market value of the transaction held in the banking book. This is recall wrong because M2M process does not apply to the transaction held in the banking book so this is wrong what is banking book is a banking book is a portfolio of assets and liabilities that are held for the long-term investment and not subject to the frequent price changes the banking book is valued at historical cost or amortized cost which is the original or adjusted value of the transaction the m2m process applies to a transaction which are held in trading book and not in the banking book what is trading book these are the financial assets and liabilities that are held for trading purpose and are subject to frequent price changes Next question is paying cash for the settled portion of the derivative trade at a market price. This is wrong because M2M process, this is, this is not M2M process. This is settlement process, which is the process of exchanging cash or other assets to finalize a trade. The settlement process occurs after the M2M process, which is a process of adjusting the value of an asset or liability to reflect its current market price. So in M2M, we reflect the current market price of what? Of value of the assets or liability. The M2M market process occurs before the settlement process and it does not involve any cash or asset exchange. Obtaining and verifying market prices for all the instrument held in the in trading book. This is okay. The mark to market process involves obtaining and verifying market prices for all the instruments held in the trading book. The trading book is a portfolio of financial assets and liabilities that are held for trading purposes and are subject to frequent price changes. Trading book is valued at a fair value, which is current market price of the instrument. And M to M process ensure that, that the trading book reflects the fair value of the instrument and unrealized gain or losses that are recognized in the income statement so that's why this option is correct which option is correct this one because this is the most uh, correct answer in among all those four because M2M process involve obtaining and verifying market prices for the instruments held in the trading book. Because trading book assets are subject to frequent price changes. And this, they should be valued at a fair value, which is current market price of the instrument. So to ensure that the trading book reflects fair value of the instrument and unrealized gain or losses are recognized in the income statement, this is... This activity is important. Last is again wrong because assessing the profitability of each state compared with the aggregate market. This is part of the performance measurement process. This was part of settlement process. This is part of performance measurement process, which is the process of evaluating the results of the trading activity and the performance of the trader. The performance measurement process uses the information from the M2M process but it also involves other factors such as risk adjusted return, such as benchmark. Incentives. M2M process is evaluation process and not an evaluation. <laughs> evaluation process. So there is a difference. There is a difference should be M2M is a valuation process and not evaluation process. By this, 
i'm ending this video here i hope you like this video and next video we are going to come up with questions number starting 29 to let's see how much we can cover take care bye bye have a nice day